In this video, I'm going to show you how you can configure NeoVim to be the last editor you'll need for writing Go. By the end of this video, you'll have code suggestions and snippets, auto formatting on save, a powerful debugger, and many other utilities to make writing Go code in NeoVim an absolute pleasure. As with all of my NeoVim configurations, I'm going to be starting from a base installation of NVChad. If you want a better introduction to NVChad, then I recommend watching my intro video beforehand. You can always jump back here after. To get started, you'll want to install the latest version of NeoVim, which at the time of recording is version 0.9. I'm using Arch, by the way, so I'll go ahead and install NeoVim using Pac-Man. Once NeoVim is installed, we can now set up NVChad as our base configuration. If you already have a NeoVim configuration set up, it's probably worthwhile to move it into a backup first. Once that's done, you can install NVChad by running the following git command, which will clone the repository into our NeoVim config directory. Make sure you have git installed, by the way. Once that command is done, you'll want to open up NeoVim and you'll be greeted with a prompt. Go ahead and type n for no, so that you're able to start with the same configuration I am. You should then see the lazy package manager install our base packages. Once everything's installed, I'm going to set the theme to Capuchine by pressing the space, T and H key combination to bring up the theme switcher and selecting the best color scheme from the list. With that out of the way, we're in a good position to start adding in our Go plugins. The first thing we're going to want to do is set up an LSP server to get code suggestion, autocomplete and code analysis working. For Go, the popular LSP server is GoPlease, so we're going to use that. We can install it by either using GoGet or Mason which comes bundled with NVChad. Let's use Mason as it's worthwhile to write configuration as code, in my opinion. To do so, we're going to need to create a new file called plugins.lua in our NeoVim config under the custom directory. Here, we're going to create an empty Lua table called plugins and return it. Now let's go ahead and add in an entry for Mason. This entry will merge with the default entry in NVChad, allowing us to add more configuration options. Inside this entry, add a value for the ops, and add go please under the ensure installed key. After that, jump on over to your chadrc.lua file also in the custom directory and set the plugins value of the m table to be custom.plugins, which basically loads the file we just created. Now go ahead and restart NeoVim by closing and reopening it. Then we can type the mason install all command and we should see go please being installed. Next up, we want to make sure that go please is loaded whenever we're working in a go file. Jumping back over to our plugins file, let's add in another entry for NeoVim's LSP config. We'll also override the configuration function to load the default NVChad configuration, but also our own custom config, which we're about to create. Let's create a new directory called configs in our custom folder and add a file of lspconfig.lua. Here we're going to add in the configuration for our GoPlease server. The first thing to do is import the onAttach and capabilities functions from the NVChad config. If you've watched any of my other videos, this is a very familiar process. Next up, we can import the NeoVim LSP config plugin and the utilities helper. Don't worry, by the way, if you get a yellow warning, this is just the Lua LSP server complaining about the naming collision. It won't cause any negative effects, however. Now that that's done, we can add in the go please entry to our LSP config table by adding in the following line. We'll then call the setup function and add in the onAttach and capabilities values. We'll also set the command to use, which is go please, as well as the file types we want the LSP server to be enabled for. Next, we want to set the project root for our LSP server, which should be the directory that contains either a go.work, go.mod, or a .git directory. Okay, go ahead and save this file and jump on over to a Go project to test out our code suggestions. When we type in some code, we can see the auto suggestions pop up in our window, looking good. But before we move on, there's a couple of other settings I like to add. Back in our LSP config file, let's add the complete unimported true setting, which will automatically import packages when we use autocomplete. Another setting I like to enable is use placeholders, which will add placeholders for any function parameters or struct fields in the completion responses. Finally, I like to enable the unused parameter as analysis as well. That way I can get a warning for any parameters that are unused. GoPlease provides many other static analysis settings that you can enable. I recommend looking over the analyzers document in the GoPlease repo to see if there's any others you want to use. The next feature I like to enable is auto formatting of our code whenever we save. This prevents having to run tools such as GoFormat or GoImports before committing our code. To enable this, we can either do so using GoPlease or we can use the null ls plugin instead, which tends to be my preferred approach as it's easier to use for other languages. Let's go ahead and do that. 
Jumping over to our custom plugin file, let's add in the null ls package to our plugins table. We'll set the file type that we want this plugin to load for to be go, and then we can add in a function to set up our null ls options. Our null ls options are going to be rather heavy, so let's create a new file for this to keep our plugins table clean and readable. First, add in a new file in the custom configs directory called nullls.lua. Inside this file, we want to import the null ls package and create our options table, which will return. Inside of this table, we're going to set up our auto formatting sources of go format and go imports. If you prefer go Fumped, which is a stricter version of go format, then you can use that instead. Instead of go imports, I prefer to use the go imports reviser version, which adds more deterministic ordering of imports. Whichever of these packages you use, make sure you have them installed on your system. You can do so by running the go install command for each package. Additionally, you may also want to use the golines formatter, which shortens long lines if possible. If you want to use golines, you'll first need to install that on your system and then add in the golines sources to our null ls options. Now we have our auto formatting set up, which we can run by calling the lsp auto format command in NeoVim. However, this is not much better than actually running these commands in our terminal. To improve this, we can enable auto format on save. Heading back over to our null ls config, first we need to create an auto command group. We'll need this to group our auto formatting so that we're able to cancel it. Next up, we can add a new function to our null ls on attach setting, which will be called when we attach to the null ls plugin. Next, we just want to add in the following lines, which will basically check if our client supports formatting, clear any commands from the named group in our buffer, and then create a new auto command in the group that will run on buffer prewrite, which will call the format function of the lsp server, in our case, null ls. Go ahead and save that file and let's jump back into some Go code to test our auto formatting on save. Here we have some badly formatted code. Now, if we go ahead and save our file using colon w, the code is auto formatted as per our configuration. Nice. Next up, we want to get debugging working within NeoVim for Go. To do this, we're going to need to first install Delve on our system. If you don't know what Delve is, it's basically a debugger for Go. Typical debuggers such as GDB and LLDB don't work well with Go, and so Delve is a better alternative. Because of this, it means we need to do a little more setup in order to get it working with NeoVim, but that's not a problem. You can first install Delve by using the go install command as found on the Delve readme, which is what I'm using on the screen. Once you've installed Delve, head back over to your custom plugins file, where you'll need to add an entry for nvimdap, which is the NeoVim debug adapter protocol. In addition to nvimdap, we're also going to need another plugin so we can work with Delve. There's a few out there that do this, but I've gone with the nvimdap go plugin. If you know of any better ones, then please let me know in the comments down below. The reason I've gone with nvimdap go is it's purely focused on providing the Delve integration. Given that I'm partial to modules performing one thing and one thing well, this is what makes sense to me. Let's go ahead and add it to our plugins as well. Just a quick note, at the time of recording this video, the nvimdapgo plugin was using a couple of deprecated functions which would cause warnings in the console. You can either ignore these or you can use my own fork of this plugin which is on the screen. I did submit a PR to fix this, so hopefully it's resolved in the main branch soon. We'll set the file type to go, add a dependency of nvimdap, and then call the setup function with the default options. I also like to add in some mappings to make working with nvimdap a little bit easier. To do this first, let's add a new file in our custom directory called mappings.lua. Here we'll create an empty table and return it. Then you'll want to add the following line, which will create a new entry in this table called dap. Inside of this entry, set the plugin key to true and then add in the following lines to configure our mappings. These will set up key bindings for normal mode, which is marked by the n value. These key bindings allow us to easily add in a breakpoint at our current line by pressing the space DMB key binding, and to bring up a UI side panel which will display information about the variables in our local scope by using space D, U, and S. I also like to add in some additional custom mappings for working with Go. Let's go ahead and add in another key into our table for dap underscore Go. The first mapping I want to add is for debugging the nearest Go test to our cursor using space G, D, and T. And the second mapping is to rerun the last test using space G, D, and L. After that, jump on over to the chatrc.lua file and import our custom mappings. Then jump back over to our custom plugins file and load in the mappings using the following lines in their respective plugins setup. This will only load those key bindings whenever our plugins are loaded, which prevents loading in key bindings when we don't need them. 
With that done, we can now test our new debugging capabilities. Here's some code to test hashing of a password. Inside our code, we can add a breakpoint at the current line by pressing the space, D and B key binding. You can see that a breakpoint has been added by the letter B next to the line number. Before we can run our test, we first need to install the Go grammar for tree sitter. You can do this by running ts install go on the NeoVim command line. With our breakpoint added and tree sitter set up, we can then move over to our test function and run it using the space D, G and T key binding, which could be remembered mnemonically as debug go test. Once the test is running, we should then see the code reach our breakpoint, which is now marked with an arrow where there once was a B, on line 19. Whilst we're debugging, we could also bring up an inspector window using the space D, U and S combo, which shows the values of our local variables at the time of debugging. You can remember this mnemonically as the debug UI sidebar mapping. To debug over each line, you can then call the dap stepover command in the NeoVim command line. You may also want to add your own custom mapping to make this easier. With that, we have effective debugging for Go within NeoVim. The last thing we're going to do is add in a plugin which provides a number of helper functions for interacting with Go code in our editor. You may have been wondering this whole video, why not use Vim Go? And it's a good question. Let me explain. VimGo provides a lot of tooling out of the box, but it's kind of isolated. I'm assuming that if you're using NeoVim, you're probably going to want to use other languages, and having a setup that allows you to easily add other LSP servers or auto-formatting is, to me, a better experience. So, as we're not using VimGo, we're going to add in some of the key features that we're missing. The features I really care about the most are if-error snippets, because, let's be honest, error handling boilerplate really do be a grind sometimes, and the ability to add struct tags easily, which again helps with boilerplate. There are a few plugins that provide this, but the one I decided on was gopher.nvim, which provides the features we're looking for and a number of others. To install it, let's jump back over to our custom plugins file and add in the new package. We want this to load on file a type of go as with everything else. Pretty standard. Let's also add our config functions so we can call setup on our new package. Finally, we're going to want to call the go install depths command after we install the plugin, so that any dependencies the plugin uses are downloaded. We can do this by setting a build function in our plugin table. The build function is called whenever the plugin is installed or updated. Here we can call the vim command of go install depths and our dependencies will automatically be added. Nice. Now if we jump on over to a go struct, we can easily add in JSON struct tags by calling the go tag add command with the JSON argument. We can also do the same with YAML. The Gopher package provides a bunch of other functionality, such as the ability to run GoModTidy from within NeoVim, being able to run the goget command to download a package from within NeoVim, automatically generate go test boilerplate for the functions in your current file, and auto-generating if error blocks. I'd recommend reading the Gopher documentation to find out more about what this plugin can do. The last thing we'll do is add in a keyboard mapping for adding tags to a struct. Back in our custom mappings file, let's add an entry for gopher and set a new mapping of space, g, s, and j, which stands for go struct json. In this mapping, we'll call our go tag add command. Let's also add a custom mapping for yaml as well using space, g, s, and y. Lastly, we just need to jump over to our plugins.lower and add in the mapping to the gopher.envim config function. Once we reload NeoVim, we can now use this mapping for generating struct tags. And with that, we've turned NeoVim from a basic text editor into one that has been customized and packed full of productivity features for working in Go. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if there's any other languages you'd like me to set NeoVim up for, please let me know in the comments down below. Otherwise, thank you for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.